Okay, so one of the most confusing things for people is you go online, spend three seconds on there, you see rates all over the place. You talk to your bank, they're giving you a different rate. And really, you know, your Uncle George did a refinance and they got a different rate. And so why is it different and where do all these rates come from? Why is one bank cheaper than another and are they really cheaper than the other? So in this video, I'm going to show you the exact tool that banks use on a conventional loan to price your loan out so that you can get a feel for what is dictating and what you need to work on to get the best deal on a mortgage. Let's face it, a lot of people want to buy a home and the payment is ultimately what dictates the price range that you end up buying in. So knowing these factors that the bank is going to use to price your loan out goes a long way to helping you get the best deal on a mortgage. Hey everyone, this is Race Robinson, your favorite Florida mortgage broker. And my opinion has always been educate yourself, learn as much as possible, do your research, and pick someone that you trust is gonna give you great information. So let's take a look exactly what banks are using and, and, and actually show you where to get the information the banks are using to price your mortgage out. All right, so here we go. We're in Google. I was gonna show you exactly what I look at. As a broker, I work with lots of different banks. And so it doesn't matter what bank I work with, doesn't matter what bank you work with, all banks that are doing conventional loans, which is all of them, are going to take adjustments on a conventional loan based on the things that I'm going to show you next. This is the secret that most lenders don't show anyone. And it's actually right out there. You can just Google Fannie Mae Rate Matrix and it will pull up a PDF that will show their loan level price adjustment. So what this does is this shows what adjustments that banks have to take. So if you and I owned a bank, these are the adjustments that we would have to take depending on the credit profile and the loan type and all the other details of the, the property that this person is trying to qualify for. So for instance, I did this at a 740 score. And say the buyer is putting 5% down. Well, they're going to take a quarter percent adjustment for doing 5% down. Now this 5% is not to the rate. It's to a thing called a yield or discount. But what it does is it pushes the rate up and it forces the bank to push the rate up because remember Fannie Mae is trying to mitigate risk based on what they feel are more riskier loans. So someone with a 740 score they feel is a better risk than someone with a 620 score. So you can see as you go down this ladder here, you're going to take bigger and bigger adjustments. So for instance, with a 620 score versus a 740 score, this person right here, say, may get a 2.75% rate, while this person here, maybe they get a 3.625% rate or 3.75% rate. So it really pushes up the rate quite a bit if you have a lower credit score on a conventional loan. Now, on top of that, if you're doing a refinance or a uh, purchase, <clears throat> all purchases have lower rates. And that's because Fannie Mae added in some adjustments in 2020 and really, they've always had some adjustments, but at the, at the time of this recording, in January of 2021, these are the current adjustments for refinance. So if you're pulling cash out on a refinance, remember these are gonna get added to those adjustments that we went over on the previous slide with your credit score. So even if you have a really high credit, you're still taking additional, additional adjustments. So again, with a 620 score, not only would you be taking the 3.25 on the other adjustment, you're also taking another 3.125 for doing a cash out refinance. So you see these things can add up really, really big time, which is why you can see a big discrepancy in rates of what different people are getting. Because again, if we're a bank, we are forced to adjust our pricing based on the credit profile of the person that we're talking to. Again, last thing here too is the the, whether it's a two unit property, meaning maybe it's a duplex or triplex, those also have an adjust, additional, additional adjustments and condominiums also have an additional adjustment, which means Fannie Mae feels like a condominium is a little more risk than a single family home. And also if it's an investment property, there'll be an additional, sometimes very big adjustment on investment property. So again, it gets very complicated when, because really every single buyer that that bank is pricing out a loan for is probably going to be different. Different down payment, different credit score, maybe different type of loan that they're doing. Maybe one's a condominium, one's a single family home, one's a multi-unit property, um, one's a second home. So all those things get pushed into this table 
and makes a different rate in pricing for every single person that qualifies for a loan. And really other, some other factors are how long, like if, when I'm dealing with a buyer and they go to contract and I look at that contract and say it's 60 days out, the longer I have to lock that rate in, meaning the longer time the bank has to guarantee that rate, the, the pricing is going to get a little worse. Some banks or lenders have overlays on top of the ones that I already just showed you. And I do do alternate loan programs such as, you know, bank statement loan programs or other types of creative loan programs for maybe credit score issues or bankruptcies or short sales or foreclosures. Those will have their own set of rates. But here's the big one, and this is discount fees and lender fees, meaning all banks are going to advertise really what's in their best interest, which is to get the phone to ring to advertise the lowest possible rate. And so one, they're not going to advertise a loan program with a low credit score. I was looking at lease cars earlier this year, and the lease that we were looking at was like $350 a month. But when we got there and we talked to the leasing company and the car company, by the time we added on simple things like a steering wheel and tires or whatever, obviously that payment went up. Don't forget all banks, doesn't matter who they are, if they're advertising online, it's going to be very, very, very small percentage of people that actually are going to get those rates because they're going to be advertising really high credit scores, really big down payments, and they're probably going to be advertising programs with discounts and lender fees, which are extra cost to get the loans. So for instance, I pulled up Quicken today, you know, and they were advertising 2.75%. But again, this is for a 740 score or higher. This is for a purchase. This is one point extra. When you see a lender say they're advertising a point, one point means 1%. Two points means 2%. So one point on a $200,000 loan is equivalent to $2,000 in extra closing costs. And remember, you can bump the rate up and take less cost. But remember online, people want to advertise the lowest rate. But a difference in a payment between 2.75 and 2.875 on say a $200,000 loan amount may only be $15 a month. So it may not be what you want to do, which is pay points because maybe you don't want a lot of extra closing costs. And again, they're advertising a loan with 25 percent down. So again, remember when you're looking online, I always say banks, any internet site, whatever, they're always going to be advertising the unicorn, meaning most people aren't going to get, aren't going to meet those qualifications. And even if you do, you may not want to pay the extra cost that they're advertising to get the rate for that particular program. Okay, so there you have it. You can see there's lots of different factors on pricing out a mortgage, and it's going to be a little different for every person. Also remember, FHA has totally different pricing model, actually has lower rates in many cases, but has some other disadvantages. So does VA, USDA, you know, all these different loan programs have their own pricing model. So what do you do? One, do your research. Two, find someone that you trust because you really do need someone to take you through these programs, gives you the pros and cons of each of them so that you can figure out what's going to be the best loan program and get you the best overall deal on a mortgage going forward. So with that, if you're buying a house in Florida, I'd love to apply for that position of somebody that earns your business and that you can trust. If you have any questions though, feel free to comment below. Uh, like this video, it does help. Anything I can ever do, let me know. Make it a great 2021 and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.